Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we strive for understanding. Today we're going to focus on creating an elevator that moves up and down using pistons and rotors. There was a short video provided a while ago by the Black Knight that illustrated it could be possible to build such an elevator, but unfortunately there wasn't that much information included in the video. Today we're on the great planet Mars, if you notice the red background and such. It gives kind of a contrast to this elevator. As you can see all the way up, we have attached small rotor heads to these blocks. And this is a combination large grid plus small subgrid. I've configured this using timer blocks where all you need to do is essentially hit the button to go up or down with the elevator. As you can see from the bottom, the timer blocks are flashing as they count and perform the designated task. Now that you've seen it, I think we should try building one together. This should only be about five blocks wide, but the central base of it is only three blocks. I don't want to keep it connected to the other grid. It may confuse us when we're identifying the timer blocks, pistons, and buttons. So we're just starting it at the exact same grid level, and we're going to build from there. First, you want to build the elevator tower as tall as you need it to be. Whether this is reaching up the side of a mountain, or in a ravine, or potentially just to the next level of your base. Next, we're going to put a rotor on this large grid. Make sure that it's at zero degrees horizontally. Then to access after cutting the head off, we're going to place a battery. Since we'll need a battery anyways to power the entire elevator, you might as well start out with that. Now with the battery placed, we just access the terminal. And on this rotor, we're going to call it the rotor main. That way we don't confuse it because we are going to add three other rotors to the setup. Add a small head. And you can either use the rotor lock. Oh, wait. First, share inertia. That'll prevent us from vibrating. So you can either use the rotor lock or set your lower and upper limits to zero. Essentially, we don't want this thing to rotate at all while we have the small grid connected to it. The rotor displacement is going to be maxed out. That way the small head allows us to build the small blocks almost flush with the large grid blocks. You'll see what I mean in a second. As I put these small grid blocks on here, they almost perfectly line up with the edge of the large grid blocks. Initially, you want to have the small grid blocks equal to the rotor just to give you a general idea of how big your elevator platform will be. After that, I suggest filling in the rest of this area all the way up to the top of the towers with small grid blocks. I have increased the speed of this part of the video so you don't have to wait as long to see the final result. There we go, that should do it for there. 
Next, we're going to start with the platform. I'm going to put multiple blocks out and then two blocks out from the main portion of the wall and two blocks out to the sides. It'll make sense in a minute. I use two blocks, that way I can fit these pistons in the front of it, but then we're also going to need to connect it separately to the wall using merge blocks. First, let's set the pistons and then the rotors on top. Each piston has at least one rotor on top of it. These rotors also should be at zero degrees horizontally facing the wall. For me, I mark these pistons, either the piston left side, or piston right side, or piston center, so we can keep them kind of organized. The velocity is going to be negative two. And then the rotor is going to match the piston, so this will be rotor left. And on this rotor, we will end up doing the same thing we did for the main rotor, which is setting the lower limit to zero and setting the upper limit to zero. I'm not quite sure if rotor lock will change any of the settings, but it could affect it. The rotor displacement for now is going to be negative 11 centimeters or negatively displaced. And for the right piston and rotor, we are going to have the same settings as the left piston and rotor. So piston right. And share inertia. Negative two velocity. The rotor will be rotor right. Share inertia. Lower limit is going to be zero. Upper limit is going to be zero. And finally, the rotor displacement for now is going to be negative 11. That should do it for these. I think I forgot the shear inertia on a couple. Okay, so now that we have these set, we're going to put merge blocks on the end of these rotor heads. And there's one. And we'll go to the other side and add the other one. There it is. Then, to get a feel of how far these pistons will extend, we're going to make sure that both of them are completely extended. And then on the wall, directly in front of them, we're going to add another merge block. Well, we'll cut out the holes first. Then you want to retract your pistons before you put in the other merge blocks so they don't immediately attach to each other. I have intentionally made the operating blocks green so they're easier to see compared to the carbon colored blocks. We're going to combine these two rotors just for convenience in the future. And we're going to adjust this rotor displacement to zero. Then with them to zero, we can fully extend these pistons again and the merge blocks should come together as such. With the merge blocks together holding this platform, we can add the center piston. 
By using the merge blocks to connect these, this allows us a guarantee that later on, when we try to use the rotor attachment for the heads, they will still line up properly. We just got to figure out which position to put this center rotor in, making sure it's zero when it's horizontal. Looks about right. I forgot we want to make sure that the rotor displacement of the side ones is now extended outward by 11 centimeters. Otherwise, we won't be able to fit the piston rotor for the center piston on there. There we are, much better. Okay, now that we have the center piston and center rotor on there, we need to rename them and then adjust their settings. So the rotor will be, of course, rotor center, shear inertia, lower limit zero, upper limit is going to be zero. This time, the rotor displacement is going to be 11. Then we'll take this small rotor head off. As you know, the line in which it's currently facing, that straight line on the rotor head is very important when you're setting this new rotor head. That line has to be on the top position. First, it's going to be too far away, so we're going to have to add a small block and then the rotor head. Make sure the line is lined up and you should be good. Afterwards, we'll go back to that rotor center and you'll have the availability to attach the small head. Now that it's attached, we can go ahead and disconnect these merge blocks because now the center piston and rotor are holding the entire apparatus up. Oops, too many blocks there. We want to be able to keep these side ones extended to the full max again at 11 centimeters, so we're not adjusting those rotor heads again. Now we know we need one block offset, and it looks like we need three blocks up. So there should be a space in about four blocks. This part of the video has also been sped up, so you can see it come together as we mark every single position along each level. There looks like it matches the other side for the blocks. Now we just put all these individual rotor heads on there. Make sure the line is in the upright position when we place it. Oh, that one got away from me. Might be kind of hard to see, but once that line is in the correct position, just click and paste these small heads and keep going. If you happen to put the small rotor heads in the wrong direction, while your elevator is operating, it will try to attach, but it will rotate to the position of the rotor head. So, if you put it at a 90 degree from the horizontal zero compared to the rotor, the rotor will actually twist your entire apparatus to one side or the other to try to balance out, and then it'll basically break your elevator. We don't want that to happen, so make sure that you line up those lines. Here's the basic platform. And we're going to use a total of 14 timer blocks for this.
Six of the timer blocks are going to be used for climbing the wall to go vertical. And seven of them are going to be used to reverse ourselves. That way we can have the effect of going up and coming back down. There may be an easier way if you use a script to operate this instead of timer blocks. But if you're not really into coding or want to search the internet for the different types of scripts that could be potential, I recommend just using the timer blocks. These are going to be our two buttons. One is going to be designated for triggering the timers to go up, and the other one is going to trigger it to go down. And we want to group these pistons together because they are going to be placed in the same timer blocks at the same time. The center piston will travel up and the side pistons will travel down and vice versa. So make sure they're not all going the same direction first. As an example, we're going to set this to a negative 2 velocity, where the side pistons should be set at positive 2. That looks like the basic platform there. Next, you want two sensors. One sensor is going to be one block below the elevator platform. The next one is going to be one block below the top center small head for the rotor. We're going to call this sensor top to keep it simple. And the sensor bottom. All right, now that we have all those on there, I think we should start setting all the components the way we need them. Side rotors are good. They have the ability to attach, so they're lined up. The pistons, yep, they went in the opposite direction from each other. It's important to test these pistons out before you start timing everything else. Otherwise, you may run into issues if they're going the same direction. It won't actually climb to the next level. So for timer block one, we want a silent. Nobody needs all that beeping. We need a minimum of two seconds. If you have less than two seconds per action, the sensors will not react fast enough to stop your timer blocks later on in the process. This first timer block, we're going to put the pistons as reverse. And then we're going to add timer block two to timer block one. These will go in sequential order, so each timer block previous will also activate the next timer block. Then we go to timer block two, delay two seconds, set up actions. And for this one, we want to attach the side rotors. There we go. Then we're going to add timer block three. And we're just going to put it to start. And for timer block three setup, two seconds for the delay. Set up actions. And we are going to hmm, detach the center rotor. 
If you don't detach the center rotor, all three pistons will basically try to mimic each other and you'll get stuck at the same level. Along with that, we're going to add timer block 4. And it's going to start timer block 4 for us. Two seconds for timer block four delay. Silenced. Oop, forgot to hit silence on block three. Set up actions. And for this, we are going to extend the pistons again. This will bring us up to the next level. Then add timer block five. Start. And delay of two seconds. Silenced. Set up actions. And for timer block five, we're going to attach the center rotor again. After we've moved, we want to reattach the center rotor and then the center rotor will essentially pull your elevator upwards. Then we're gonna add timer block six. And on timer block six actions, the delay again is two seconds. All timer blocks, as you notice at this point, are all set to two seconds. Set up actions. And for number six, we simply need to detach the side rotors. And then that starts our process all over again. So we just need to add timer block one and start that one. And since everything is in sequential order and starts each other in that order, once we hit the button, timer block six will engage and loop the program. First, let's set these sensors, otherwise we're gonna have an issue. Let's group all these timer blocks together because they're going to be an action on the sensors themselves. We'll just call these the timer blocks up. Timer block seven is going to be used in conjunction with the timer block grouping. So you don't want it to be part of the timer block up. Let's also group these rotors together. We want the center left and right. Make sure you don't grab that rotor main because it's going to really screw up your system. So a sensor top, the left and right are 0 0.1. The bottom is going to be 0 0.5. The top is going to be 0 0.1. The back is 0 0.1. And the front extent is 1.5. There may be some offsets of these that work, but that's the settings I'm currently using. We don't want to detect yourself as a player on here. We want it to detect our station and our subgrids. And that should be about it for those lower settings. Now, set up actions. When it gets to the top, we want it to attach all the rotor heads so we don't have a chance of the elevator falling off. Then we're going to add the timer block upset and we're going to put it at stop. This way the sequence does not continue on as soon as we get to the sensor. Then for block seven, we're going to hit reverse for the pistons.
and we'll have the on and off for the top sensor. Every time this cycles, that sensor will go on and off, but it'll still stop the platform. And then we added timer block eight. Timer block eight, we have a delay of two. Our setup actions here. Are going to be basically the opposite of what the first set of timer blocks were. So we're going to attach the center rotor. Then we're going to add timer block nine on timer block nine. The delay will be two seconds. Set up actions. Oop, silent first silent. Don't want to need any beeping around here. Set up actions. And I think it is the side rotors next. Yep. And we will detach the side rotors. And then add timer block 10. We will just start timer block 10 on that one. Timer block 10, the delay is also two seconds. As specified before, all timer blocks have the same delay. For timer block 10, we're going to extend the pistons again or reverse the pistons. Sorry about that. Didn't want to confuse you. There is an extend potential, but we are simply reversing them. And then we're adding timer block 11 and starting timer block 11. Two second delay for timer block 11. Set up actions. Side rotors. We're going to attach them. And then add timer block 12. For timer block 12, two second delay. Set up actions. Rotor center, detach. And then add the start for timer block 13. Timer block 13, silent, delay of two seconds. And then set up actions. Reverse the pistons again. And then finally, with timer block 13, we're going to start timer block 8. This is similar to timer block 6 in the upward position, restarting the sequence by triggering or starting timer block 1. Then we just simply have to set the sensor bottom, left extent 0 0.1, right extent 0 0.1, bottom extent 0 0.1, top extent is different. It's 0 0.5. It's exact opposite of the upper sensor. Your back extent is 0 0.1 and 1.5 for the front extent. Proximity alert off. Don't need any beeping. If you want to check to see exactly how far your sensors are showing, click on the info tab, show the field for the sensor, and then come back up to the top and show on HUD.
By the way, I also selected the subgrid and detect stations. But now you can kind of see where the sensor is going to detect. We don't need it to detect the entire platform, primarily just where the piston is going to follow through. It's going to detect the rotor on top of the piston, and at that point, the sequence is going to start to stop all of our movements. If you need to do it with the sensor top, you just go back and click on show on HUD under the sensor top. And that should be it. For the sensor bottom, we want it the same. We want to attach all of the rotor heads first. And then we need to group the timer blocks for the movement down. So we'll group those. And then afterwards, place them in the bottom sensor, so the bottom sensor, as soon as it detects, will stop all the timer block sequences. This may get really confusing over time, but later on in the video, I will provide an outline that shows how the controls for each item should be set. Alright, now that we have it all together, we should be ready to test this thing. We want to be able to determine which panel button is up and which panel button is down. So for a simple reference, I'm just adding these text LCD screens and we're going to put what it is that we're looking at. Select text and images. Font size I have originally set it on the other one at 6.5. Edit text. And I'm just going to put the word up. Then the alignment is in the top left corner, so we want to be able to fix that too. Unalign it to the center, and then this text padding gives you space from the top and bottom borders. I'm going to use about 25%. That way it puts it right in the center and it's easy to read. For this one, we're just going to label it down and do the exact opposite of what we did for the first panel. So text and images, edit text, instead of up, we're putting down. Font size 6.5. Center alignment, and then tax padding again is 25%. This puts it back at the center of the LCD screen again. Everything else should be the same. There you have it. Now to designate these buttons. So for the up button, you want to start with timer block one. All you have to do is select timer block one and set it to start. For the second button for down, you want to start with timer block eight. Since timer block eight is the beginning of the sequence for reversing the operation to go back down. With all that set up, let's go ahead and give it a test. Looks like we're functioning all right. This part of the video was not sped up at all, and this is the actual speed. Might be kind of slow, but you can also do this on a large scale which 
could help moving vehicles from one platform to another or say adding them from one level rail to another. It's kind of interesting how it climbs the wall. Definitely not the fastest of elevators I've seen, but pretty consistent. Once it gets to this top, we should see the platform light stop blinking for the timer blocks as that center piston head crosses and it will just stop at that position. If you by chance did not add locking all the rotors or attaching all the rotors at one time on the sensor, this platform will simply just fall off. Okay, now that we made it to the top, let's see if we can get it to reverse. Just press the down button. You can see the lights again on the timer blocks in sequence. And we are descending. Overall, this is a pretty interesting project. If you don't want to babysit whatever you have, or if you want to automate a drone rover from one level to another, you could always set up this elevator to do so. Then once it gets to that higher elevation, you can re-engage the rover to follow a track on the next level to whatever destination you choose. Upon return, just have the rover return to the elevator and reactivate the down button. This down button doesn't necessarily have to be a button. You could also do this remotely. Or, like I mentioned earlier, a script if you happen to be good with writing the scripts or finding a script that will also work in conjunction. As I had mentioned earlier, here are the settings needed for the timer blocks. And these are the settings used for the sensors. Well, as always, thanks for watching and please feel free to leave your tips and tricks in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it.